Today on Mike Attempts, 1987 Corvette. I'm back at my dad's garage again. We've already seen what's behind door number one, so let's open door number two. If you're curious to know why I'm here, check out the first video of the Garage series. This is the third video of the series, and today I'll be troubleshooting this 1987 Corvette. My dad bought it in 1990, and I think I was the last person to drive the Corvette any substantial distance. He let me take it to prom in the late 90s with the future Mrs. Attempts. My dad's friend recently told me, after sitting for many years, they couldn't get it started because of the VAT's security. Ugh, no key in the ignition. Wait. Bingo! It looks really good under the hood. This diehard is dead. The fuel door was already removed, so it looks like my dad had been trying to troubleshoot the problem. There's some corrosion under the cap. All the fluids were full and looked really clean. Out with the old, in with the new. How the hell do you turn the wipers off? Oh, there it is. I quickly realized VATS wasn't the issue when the security light was off and I was able to crank the engine. But it won't fire. Looks like my dad was in the fuse box too. The cover was already off. This 10 amp fuse is labeled FR, which I believe stands for fuel relay. It didn't appear to be blown, but I found this fuse kit in a toolbox, so I'm going to replace it. I checked the other fuses while I was in there, but they all looked fine. The fuel relay is that little black box right there. After removing the two bolts securing the relay, I immediately broke both clips while trying to unplug it. The relay pins are dirty, but they look alright. The plug looks worse, and some of the connectors are pushed back further than others. I cleaned up the relay with some electronic cleaning spray. I gave the plug the same treatment and tried to get the connectors as even as possible. I plugged the relay back in but it still wouldn't start. 
I found a way to test the relay by connecting one end of a wire to the positive battery terminal and touching the other end to the bottom left pin of the diagnostic connector under the dash on the driver's side. When I touch that pin with the wire, I could hear the relay clicking, so I think it's fine. I just wish I would have tried that before removing the relay. Oh well. I also checked the fusible links behind the battery, but they were all good. The fuel system is high pressure, but when I press the needle in this Schrader valve on the fuel rail, there's no pressure at all. Everything is pointing towards a bad fuel pump, but I still want to check for spark. Yep, we've got spark. One final test. I've attached a section of hose from the fuel pump outlet into this bucket. If the pump is working, it should spray gas. Nothing. Must be a bad pump. It was a bit of a fight, but I disconnected the remaining hoses and removed the bolts. Let's see if it'll come out. This thing is nasty. And the inside of the tank isn't any better. I wanted to replace this whole fuel pump assembly. I called local Chevy dealerships and parts stores, but no one had it. I was able to find the assembly online, but I'm running out of time and it wouldn't arrive before I have to leave. So I tried my best to clean it up. It actually looks a lot better. This is the return tube. It was so badly blocked that I had to use a drill bit to clean it out. I flushed all the tubes with carb cleaner and they seemed to be flowing freely. I used one of those cheap $7 manual fluid pumps to pump over four gallons out of the tank and it worked great. Then I just reached in and cleaned up the rest by hand. I was really dreading this task, but it wasn't that bad, and it turned out well. I picked up a new pump and filter sock locally and got everything reassembled. Again, I would never recommend reusing this assembly. This is not a proper repair. But at this point, I don't have a choice. I spread a thin layer of grease on the gasket and maneuvered the assembly into place. I've never replaced a fuel pump. But as far as access goes, this is pretty convenient. I tightened the bolts, reconnected the hoses, and plugged in the pump. Hopefully I didn't do all that for nothing. gas gauge still doesn't work, but it runs. I buttoned everything up and reinstalled the fuel door. I have very little room, but let's see if it'll move. I call that a success. It starts and idles great. If it's not sold by my next visit, maybe I'll have time to replace the entire fuel pump assembly. On to the next one.